We have to learn how to not feminize men. And we have to help women come back to their feminine side. What's happening to women is they're in a testosterone world during the day. Anytime there's urgency, emergency, risk, the hormone testosterone is released, is released, is released. If you were a man and you were born with man body, that testosterone would lower your stress. And then you'd have to come home and rebuild your testosterone. But to cope with stress, you have to release testosterone. You have to have testosterone to release. For men, that's their cycle. Lose it, gain it back, lose it, gain it back. But for women, while testosterone is important to you, it's a very small player. And when you're doing an activity like solving problems or earning money or sacrificing for a noble cause, your testosterone is being released, but it doesn't lower your stress levels. It's a different physiology. Now, what's interesting is in the first trimester of birth, if your mother was in danger, quite often you will have higher testosterone levels than the average woman. And therefore, you will tend to think you're from Mars. When you hear about all my descriptions of being from Mars, well, that's me. Well, that may be you in terms of personality and temperament, but it's not you in terms of hormones. Regardless of how much testosterone you have, whatever your brain is a little different than your average woman, you think you're a Martian, still your hormones are the same. You still have the hormones that make babies. And your bodies are designed differently. And this is the great research which has come out, which is why I was inspired to write this book, Venus on Fire, Mars on Ice, because it gives me this psychological, the physiological direction coming together. I had the research on a foundation level to show this huge breakthrough in understanding gender differences. Why is it that women have so much more depression? Why is it that there's so much more ADD in males? Why is it that women are having all these fertility issues? I remember just 20 years ago, this whole fertility doctor thing coming in vogue. And everybody said, oh, it's ridiculous, it's voodoo science and whatever. And suddenly now, one out of three married couples has to seek fertility help. What's going on? It's a huge crisis in the world today. The massive amount of antidepressants with one out of three women taking some kind of medication to feel loving and to feel good and to sleep at night. This is shocking stuff. How can you have a marriage survive and thrive when you're taking medications to not feel stressed out? And all those medications have side effects. That's why you have to go to a doctor for them. We're not getting to the root cause. And the great news about my presentation is even in an hour, I can lead you to the inspiration to study more relationship skills. That's in the book. I can explain to you in a minute why he's sitting on the couch. Which, by the way, will st lower your stress dramatically. With it. Research shows that when women are in the workplace, their stress level is twice as high as a man's. Twice as high. Cortisol levels. Measure them. When she comes home, her stress levels double again. Now, I know a big part of that is she sees everything she has to do. She has no time to do it. That's A. That increases it a bit. But if you're married and you look over at the couch and he's sitting there and you think, why is he sitting there? Doesn't he see? Does he expect me just to do this? Your stress levels jump even higher. So in one minute, and just today, you'll at least know why. And it can lower your stress levels. Then you read the book. You learn how to get him off the couch. Okay, that's a much more difficult task. <laughs> it's a very challenging thing because he has to be there for some period of time, but how long is the big question. Women always say, how long do I let him sit on the couch? And my answer back to women is, well, how long do you get to be upset when you're upset? There's no quick answer to it. What we want to do as couples is understand what does our partner need at that time? When he's there, what is he needing? When, you're, when I see my wife overwhelmed and stressed out, what is she needing? What can I do for her? And not one man knows I've struggled with this question for couples over 50, 50, 30 years where a woman's upset. She says, what can I say? What can I say? And I kept trying to figure out things you could say to help her. I finally realized the reason there's nothing you can say is because there's nothing you can say. <laughs> As a matter of fact, don't say anything, but look at her. Ask more questions. Ask more questions. And why does that work? Because when women talk and they feel heard, the brain releases serotonin it calms their brain. And when it calms their brain, they can start to remember why they married you in the first place. <laughs>